So the Blizzard devs have just released a video on the gauntlet, which is 24 hours away. As everyone knows, Diablo 4, the gauntlet in Season 3, is now going to be released on March 5th. That's 24 hours away. They released this video. So we're going to watch, I think it's about six minutes, we're going to watch this video. And I'm going to tell you why the gauntlet is going to be a big L in Season 3. So let's get to it. Open your blades because Diablo 4 is getting a new competitive game mode called the Gauntlet. My name is Bloodshed and I'm here with Marcus Kretz. How you doing, friend? Hey, Bloodshed. Doing great. I'm excited to talk about the Gauntlet. I assume you're pretty pumped. As long as I beat everyone in the office, then I think I'll be happy. We also have a very special... That shouldn't be too hard because apparently not many of you play the game guest for Q&A today, Kaylee Calder, who is a lead game producer. Welcome, Kaylee. Hey, it's really, really great to be here with you guys. And I'm uh, yeah, really excited to talk about the Gauntlet. Yeah, I was telling Marcus, I think it's cool that we have a developer deliver this information publicly. So shout out to Kaylee and all the developers, all the guests we've had come on. The Gauntlet is the first player versus environment competitive game mode coming to Diablo 4. It's part of a larger framework called Trials that holds all this content together. Bonus points if you notice the in-game tab already. The way it works is, every seasonal week it's active, players in World Tier 4 can compete in a static, non-linear dungeon. That basically means it's designed for you to take whatever pathway you see fit and see who can earn the highest score possible. So basically, and, and you guys should already know this, the weekly gauntlet is gonna get reset every week during that week, the gauntlet is static, meaning it's exactly the same every time you go in it, where enemies spawn, where the pillars spawn, and the premise being that they want you to get familiar with the gauntlet and where enemies are, where the pillars are, so you can therefore improve your score and get better and better. I would imagine that's the reason why they made it static. You earn points by killing monsters, killing bosses, opening chests, all within the eight minute time limit. To promote as much fairness as possible, everything will be the same for everyone, from the map layout, the shrine placement, boss locations, monster affixes, all identical. Take your character into battle, solo or with friends, tackle and match the gauntlet with 16 different ladders, separated by class, group size, platform, and of course, hardcore and normal modes. Mark so just to reiterate, the leaderboards are going to be class specific. It's also going to be segregated by hardcore, softcore, whether you're doing it in a group or doing it solo. All these are different ladders that you'll be able to chase and see how good you can do. Marcus is now going to take you through the overall design of the gauntlet. Thanks, Ruben. So the gauntlet is designed for mastery. Every week is like a new puzzle for you to figure out. You or your group can develop strategies specific to your build or playstyle. Since the dungeon is non-linear, you will need to decide the best route to take. You're also going to have to figure out the best time to loot chests or to pop pillars. Speaking of pillars, we are adding two unique versions to the gauntlet. The first one we're adding is called the Pillar of Glory. This pillar gives you a score multiplier for the duration of the effect. It's best used when there's lots of monster density to gain the highest score possible, since monster kills grant points. I can definitely see players kiting enemies to these locations to maximize the effect or pairing it with other pillars where possible. Secondly, we're adding a pillar of proving, which respawns all enemies in the area. This one is very fun and hey, who doesn't love more monsters to kill? These kinds of tools in the gauntlet allow for some creative ways to score points, which could be different from what other... So it looks like there's going to be like specific pillars. And there's two types that they mentioned here. One meaning that once you activate that pillar, a timer starts and you get bonus points. So they're implying that, and, and obviously this would be a wise thing to do. If you're familiar with this pillar after you're running the gauntlet over and over, a good strategy would be to kite the area, drag in enemies to that pillar, activate it, start the timer, and just kill all the enemies you've brought to that pillar therefore maximizing the points you can get within the time frame of turning that pillar on and then the second pillar they made reference to was the fact that when you activate that pillar it re 
spawns all the mobs in that area. So again, if you find a high density mob area, you'd be wise to pop that pillar and utilize that. And again, the premise being here that they're saying that this their strategy involved in the gauntlet and they mentioned two pillars that help facilitate that strategy process. What players are doing, helping to set yourself apart from the competition. And if that wasn't enough for you, in the gauntlet, bosses spawn shrines when they die. We're now entering a shrine section. You're gonna need to bring a barb on your squad. If you get too deep in the gauntlet, you might need a kick. Okay, so it looks like when you kill the bosses in the gauntlet, it, it generates a, sh a shrine. All these additions really incentivize us to think strategically when approaching each weekly gauntlet map. Bloodshed is now gonna walk you through how the leaderboards work. Take it away. Once you complete your first run of the gauntlet, you'll be placed in a named rank. We're calling them seals. As you attain higher scores, you will gain better seals. Each will have predetermined score thresholds, so you could actually technically skip right to the final seal if you're a beast. The seals are blooded, steadfast, iron-willed, and worthy. The top 1,000 players will be displayed on the leaderboard, and each Tuesday the leaderboard will reset, and depending on your named rank, you will earn an emblem and some loot caches. The gear level you receive scales depending on your seal rank, so worthy players should be getting 925 level items. These ranks will serve as a bearing for how well you're doing. Remember, the leaderboard only houses the top 1,000 players for that particular ladder, so climbing through the seals is a nice way to indicate where you are in your journey. In addition, the top 10 players each week for every ladder are going to be immortalized forever in the Hall of the Ancients. Yes, you'll be able to go back years later and show your children just how much of a badass you were. Okay, so a couple of things. <clears throat> it looks like there's those four categories of seals and the leaderboards are specific to each class. And it looks like the top 10 every week are gonna be immortalized, like the gentleman said. And you'll be immortalized, in my opinion, in two ways. Number one, the fact that you were at the top 10 in your specific class and category for the gauntlet. And you'll also be immortalized and recognized as someone that played the gauntlet and the leaderboards and Diablo 4 when basically 95% of the population wasn't. So you, it's a very nice title to carry. All right, Marcus, what questions do we have for Kaylee? So for Q&A, we try to think of questions the community might have, or sometimes we just wanna see how developers approach certain mechanics. Or instead of you thinking about what questions to ask the developer of a new feature in season three, why not actually take actual questions from the player base who regarding the gauntlet have been asking questions since the launch of season three. So you've had enough time to collect questions regarding the gauntlet, but hey, that's just me. So Kaylee, shrines only spawn when a boss is killed, right? When you're exploring the gauntlet, you're only gonna come across pillars. So for the shrines that spawn when a boss is killed, do those change at all? So when you're killing uh, one of the bosses in the gauntlet, they are always going to drop the same shrine every single time. So you can kind of rely on that every time you run through the gauntlet. And that shrine is going to be one of the ones you could run into in the world. So you're gonna have some variety there too. I have a question. When people are placed on the leaderboard, can we see what build they're running at the time of completion? So you will get a shortcut to the player's profile, which will show you the build they currently have, but we do not have a snapshot of their kind of their winning build um, that they had at the time. So then, like, you know, I thought, you know, just hearing this right now is really disappointing, I have to say. One of the, one of the reasons I would imagine players, I'm not going to be playing the gauntlet, but one of the reasons I would imagine a player is going to play the gauntlet, obviously, is that they want to compete and see how they do. Um, but clearly, they want to also see how well they can do. And if they don't do well, or they're just at the cusp of maybe breaking the top 1,000, or, or maybe they're an OP player, and they want to actually win the thing or crack the top 10, to not be able to look at the winning build and you only get to see that player's live build. like So in other words, what this is saying is if a player goes in as a barbarian and is number one on the leaderboard um, because the gear is locked out 
we're going to learn that the gear, you, you're locked out, which I actually agree with. You shouldn't be able to change your build in the gauntlet on the fly. You set your gear up and you run the gauntlet like that. I totally agree with that. That's the way it should be. Uh, but your gear is locked, right? Um, so if a player wants to aspire to that kind of progression in the gauntlet, clearly they want to see, okay, wh what's this number one barbarian? What did he have that I didn't have? The fact that they can't see that is, uh, I, I think that's 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 not good. They should have done that. And again, it speaks, again, to me, it speaks to the laziness of the programming that's involved in getting that done. Again, lazy, lazy dynamics in the game. Again, a non-techie making a statement like that, I don't know how complicated it is to, to grab uh, a snapshot of the person that's number one on the leaderboard or, or the top 10 on the leaderboard. But um, I think a lot of players are not going to like that because they're not going to be able to see or they have to guess, were they wearing this when they ran the gauntlet or have they changed anything about it? So I think this is, they dropped the ball on this one personally, as small of an issue as it is, but a lot of these players are going to want to see what build was number one. But we are going to be looking at ways to further um, improve the gauntlet and trials in the future. So if the mode proves really popular, it's definitely something we consider. Nice. So they want to see if it's going to be popular first before they invest time in it. So Kelly, do you have any tips and tricks for new players trying out the gauntlet? I know you unlock it once you hit World Tier 4, but is it really something only level 100 players should be attempting? So yeah, if you're below level 100, you are certainly welcome to give it a go, uh, take a stab of it, throw down the proverbial gauntlet, as they say. Um, it's definitely going to be more of a challenge. It is definitely built with mastery in mind for people who are comfortable in that level 100 space. So, look, guys, you can try the gauntlet at whatever level you want. They're recommending you be a level 100. As you can see here on the screen, the enemies are level 124. I think that puts it up to like a Nightmare Dungeon 80-ish, something around there. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, from my memory serves me correct. Uh, but as you can see here, the enemies are level 124, so keep that in mind. But they are suggesting that, you, you know, this is for the end game build level, you know, the level 100 players. For <clears> newer <throat> players, you're going to want to have a build that you both enjoy playing and you have a good understanding of. And, you know, you should have plenty of time to do that as you're leveling up. And then it's all about bringing that curiosity, figuring out the puzzle that each gauntlet kind of provides in which path you're gonna take, um, how you're gonna kill all as many monsters as you can to maximize those points, open chests at the right time, all that kind of thing. I personally think it's gonna be really fun to tackle this as a newer player with friends in a party. Um, so you can help each other with your builds and figure out the best route together that's gonna really help you hit those seals. And you never know, maybe you'll surprise yourself. I love it. Uh, to my knowledge, we can use consumables inside the gauntlet, but can I just swap my skills around, swap my gear around when I'm inside? Uh, no, you're not going to be able to swap your gear or skills once you go in, so you're going to want to make sure you're fully prepared before you kind of enter. You can use consumables. I agree with that. Like I said earlier, you shouldn't be able to swap your skills. You know, I just picked up on something. I find it curious she phrased it, for newer players, you're going to enjoy it. For newer players... I'm curious on why she used that terminology. Anyway, just something I picked up on. So you can kind of maximize your build on the fly as you're playing through. Um, and again, this is one of those things that we'll look at making improvements to or changes to as the gauntlet um, is live and everybody's enjoying it. I'm definitely ready for the gauntlet. So big shout out to Kaylee for joining us and providing more perspective. Well, that seals it for today. See y'all in Sanctuary. <laughs> okay. So here, here's, here's where I'm at with this, and here's why I think the gauntlet is gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna start off with a little bit of fanfare and be popular, and then it's gonna be a huge L, and that's because I suspect that this gauntlet is gonna be the same old, same old. So far, everything we've seen in the campfire chat when they did the live demonstration of the gauntlet and they ran 
the class, certain classes through it. It looked very familiar terrain, very familiar mobs, and running around and looked like a circle. It may not be a circle, but that's what it looked like to me. There was a lot of backtracking, and literally you're just killing mobs and activating pillars, and there's bosses in there or whatever, and you have eight minutes to do it. I think gradually over time, and I say short time, not a long time, a very short time, the players are going to get bored and tired of this because it's going to be the same thing over and over. And if there's one thing this game doesn't need right now is something that's repetitive and the same thing because that's already there. And people are already complaining about the fact that this game is repetitive and boring. And I would argue and suggest that the gauntlet is going to be repetitive and boring yes the first two days three days maybe the first week it's going to be appealing to a certain player base and they're going to crush it and they're going to like it but over time this is going to be a huge l because of the reasons i stated boring repetitive it's the same thing over and over i haven't seen in any video any communication, any promotion of the Gauntlet. I haven't seen anything new outside of the mechanics of the uh, of the Gauntlet, like the seals, the fact that it's now a leaderboard, those things. That's the only thing that's different, but it's a leaderboard. They're, they are in other games. So um, I think this is going to be a huge, huge L, further cementing Season 3, basically being in the running to be as worse, if not worse than season one, which is a huge disappointment for Diablo 4. And I got to say, season four, the PTR better, better be a home run or else, wow, I don't even know what to say. Now, that's my opinion. I hope I am wrong. I hope gauntlets and leaderboards are successful. I hope it brings some of the players back. So maybe the dev team gets some, gets some support <clears throat> and motivation to make this game better. Because right now, even in the campfire chat and this video, the people communicating it, they look defeated. I don't know. You guys tell me. They look they look defeated. They're not even excited. And even when they're trying to express excitement, it comes off forced. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into it too much, but it's just sad all the way around. And it disappoints me to have to make these kind of videos. Uh, but anyway, I suspect Gauntlets is, and Leaderboards is going to be a big L. And it's going to fizzle out quick. Let me know what you think. Are you going to be trying the leaderboards and the gauntlets in Diablo 4 starting March 5th? Let me know. I would love to hear it. What build are you going to be bringing in? And if you're not, why are you not going to try the leaderboard gauntlet? I know why I'm not going to be playing the leaderboard. First of all, it's a mechanic in a game that I really don't care about. Uh, but that's me personally. But also, I am not playing Diablo 4 in Season 3. I stopped at level 25 just because of the boredom. So I see no reason to... This is not going to get me back in. The earliest you'll see me back in Diablo 4 is when they release the PTR. And that's potentially when I will jump back in uh, to Diablo 4. But for the meantime, let me know what you think. What do you think about this video and the communication? Are you excited about the leaderboard gauntlets? I would love to hear your comments in the comment section. And as always, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate the support. And we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.